So everybody, welcome to another edition of our Drive Time video calls. And it's a very special guest on the show today, Jess Shanahan. How are you doing? Hi, yeah, I'm doing really well, thank you, despite everything. Yes, yeah, it's it's lovely to see some uh, familiar faces. I have to say, obviously, Jess, we've met Trackside quite a few times. Now, obviously, Jess, you, you also go by another name as well, don't you, really? what, what What's that name? Yes, I'm also known as the Racing Mentor. Fantastic. So talk to us more about the racing mentor, because that is what you do in motorsport. It's slightly different from driving, although you do have experience, don't you? I've, I've been on track once or twice. I wouldn't say I have experience. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> I'm quite active in motorsport and I, I think, you know, I'm relatively well, well known. And usually I'm quite easy to spot because I have pink hair, but this is my lockdown blonde. Um, but for those You've who... got a pink coat instead today, though. Yeah, no, I thought I had to do something to be on brand because, <laughs> you know, no one's going to recognise me. Um, so I, I run Racing Mental, which is a brand I set up to help racing drivers handle the kind of the, the business side of motorsport, so the sponsorship yeah. and the branding, because I was, I was working with race teams, um, doing PR and doing marketing, doing sponsorship. And I realized that no one knew how to do this to a high level and it was holding drivers back. And I was hearing all these like frustrating stories about drivers who had talent, they'd won championships, but they just didn't have the money um, to, to make it to the next level. And they ended up stopping racing and that's heartbreaking to me. Yeah. So I started Racing Mentor and I do one-on-one -on -one coaching with people. I do big workshops. Um, I have online courses and then I also have the Racing Mentor sponsorship community on Facebook and all of that kind of comes together to teach people sponsorship skills. But I also, and I have one, a copy here, um, launched a book at the end of 2018 at Motorsport Days Live, um, which uh, is the ultimate guide to motorsport sponsorship and many drivers, and I love this, call it the Sponsorship Bible as well fantastic yes they do now i'm going to bring an image up of the book as well for those who didn't get a closer look at that now jess i've read this book uh and i have to say it, it is excellent it, it really really is because it covers it from from start to finish doesn't it essentially now when i was reading it how we work with my supercar we are sponsorship based as well so mm -hmm. it has a value to me um to finding sponsors and it covers everything even if you're a complete beginner in the outset looking to generate sponsorship or if you kind of know your way around it, but you need to take it the next step, what inspired to, to kind of write the book? And, and are we going to see another book? Well, in, in terms of inspiration, it kind of I, I knew I needed something a bit more tangible um, to to offer to racing drivers, something that they could, you know, pop in their glove box for when they're going to sponsorship meetings. And I know so many drivers and parents of drivers who do exactly that, just flick through read the sections they want before they go into a meeting. So they've got that that added confidence of what is essentially my voice in their ear going, you can do this, here's the information that you need. So that's kind of where the inspiration came from. And I am working on another book, um, slightly less relevant to, to motorsport or less focused on motorsport. It's about yeah. imposter syndrome. But I actually know that a lot of people in motorsport um, suffer with this, and I certainly did. Um, that whole feeling of fraud and, and you know, not really feeling like you belong in, in the place. And um, I've spoken to so many drivers and know that that's a, a real struggle, but it's going to be a much broader book. But um, I am working on an update to get paid to race as well. Brilliant. I want to include some more stuff about mindset because I've realized that I can give drivers all of this information on how to do the sponsorship thing. But if their head's not in the right place, it's not really going to work. Yeah, no, look, absolutely. And one of the things I think certainly in the UK motorsport scene I've come across is is the camaraderie behind the scenes. Uh, you know, every race series has got great people involved. Every race series has great banter in there. There's friendships in there. However, it is very easy to feel like you don't belong. We, when we came into the scene sort of really at the start of 2019, nobody knew who we were. We hadn't really done anything in motorsport. Um, and yeah, it, we had that feeling, you know, are we sort of imposters in here? But I'll tell you, the way everybody made us feel welcome was was just absolutely yeah. next level, really. It, it really, really was. Now, look, Jess, let's talk about you. Let's talk about you a little bit. Now, like you said, <laughs> it's not just the, the racing mentor. You had a, a career before then as well. I know you're a team uh, team boss, weren't you? Mm -hmm. So you've obviously been to quite a few tracks uh, 
in your career to date? Where would you say is your favourite place to go visit? And it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be UK based. It could be global. Um, so I was actually just talking about this on Twitter and it, it's actually a, a really hard question for me to answer. So my favourite thing in the world to do is to go to Snetterton, which is my local track, during like a midweek track day and just sit and have a coffee and watch race cars with no agenda, I can take photos, I can do videos, there's nothing for me to do work-wise in terms of meetings like there are at race events and I'm really missing that. But um, one of my, I love Brands Hatch, just yeah. as a spectator, and obviously everyone gets this, as a spectator it's phenomenal. Um, but one of the, the best circuits I've ever been to is actually Circuit of the Americas in Texas. I did oh, okay. go during a hurricane, and I'd like to go again when there's not a hurricane. Um, but it, it was just a great track, great atmosphere. I went for the Formula One, um, and it, yeah, it was just a brilliant experience to kind of walk the pits somewhere that grand. So just this question for you with regards to that then, because when you watch it on telly, that first corner, it looks like it goes up quite steep. Have you walked up there? How steep is that first into the first corner? I have walked up there, but it's not as steep as Redillion Eau Rouge complex at. Oh, far. okay. Um, but it, it's not far off. Um, but yeah, it, it was quite a slog to get to the top of that that first corner when we walked. We walked maybe the first nine corners of that of that track because I wanted to wow. get to turn eight, which was my old um, motorsport automotive brand yes. yeah. um, and race team. Um, so I had to go and walk there and take a photo, obviously. Um, but yeah, it is, it's an incredible corner. And it's, I've got um, a shot of me sitting on the start line looking up at it. Oh, wow. Superb, superb. We'd have to uh, dig that picture out sometime. And yeah. have a look at that. That'd be great to see. So uh, let's say then, Jess, you and I, we're, we're over in States and uh, we're at the Circuit of America. And we've got 10 laps around the, the track. You've got 10 laps and you can take out any car. Past, present, race car, road car, you name it. We're in complete fantasy land here. What car are you taking out for 10 laps? Oh, my God, that's such a hard question. Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel bad. I kind of lumped it on you, didn't I? Yeah. Actually? <laughs> um, probably the track spec Corvette um, that I actually drove in Texas during that same trip. Um, it had the Z... 51 track upgrade it was the 2017 model and i got to drive it in 2016 which was very special um i would love to see how that performs on track because it was larry just pulling onto the highways and things as we were going kind of around austin and we went up to houston as well so i right. think it, it would have to be you know an, an american car i think suits that that track really well so maybe a mustang um yeah. i think i'd lean towards my my love of muscle cars for that Fantastic. Good. That's really good to hear. Uh, right, Jess, now you won't thank me for this because one thing we always like to do is have a bit of a laugh at uh, yeah. the guest's expense. <laughs> now, we've all done something silly our time. We've all had an embarrassing moment. What's been your most embarrassing moment, either trackside or, or you know, presenting whatever? Or I know you speak in front of a lot of people a lot of the time. Have you ever done anything where you thought, oh, no, I can't believe I did that or I said that? Um. <laughs> I can't remember, but that's probably because I've just blocked it from my mind. This is the whole, my strong mindset. I'm just like, no, I'm not going to deal with that. Um, I was really thrown in the deep end when I was doing a live stream for an eSports 24-hour um, race. Um, right. I didn't know the drivers. I didn't know the people, anything like that. And they just gave me a microphone and went, right, you're on in 30 seconds. And I had to interview someone. I didn't know who he was. I knew nothing about the series. I hadn't been prepped. And it was terrifying, um, but it was more just terrifying than embarrassing. Yeah. Oh no, I've got a brilliant one. I can't believe. Oh it. yes, yes. Okay, I did. <laughs> some, I did some track driving at Goodwood with BMW, and for some reason, Tiff Nadell was there, and we have a friend in common, Rebecca Jackson. Um, uh, he did some trials stuff with her, and he was he was just kind of saying hello to uh, like me and all of the other journalists as we were leaving and i shook his hand and i said oh we have a friend in common we talked about rebecca for a moment and then i thought he was leaning in to give me a kiss on the cheek <laughs> he was not <laughs> but i basically accosted poor tiff Nadell, fully like just leapt in and kissed him 
<laughs> and I then walked away like, really. almost crying. I was so embarrassed. <laughs> he probably doesn't remember, but I was horrified. That's not, I'm so, I'm quite shy in real life. So just, yeah, to, to throw myself at Tiff Nadell when he wasn't expecting it was quite embarrassing. I have to say, Jess, um, that is fair. Uh, I'm never going to let you forget that, by the way, <laughs> just, just to warn you now. <laughs> now, uh, Jess, look, I know you're busy, uh, so I won't keep you too much longer. Just a couple of more things uh, I want to know, and I'm sure everybody else wants to know. Look, if somebody wants help with regards to much or want to find out more about Racing Mentor, about the courses you do, or they want to uh, get a closer look at the book, where's the best place for them to go and contact you or find out more about what you do? So I'm all over social media. And once you follow me, you won't be able to get rid of me. So I'm at Racing Mentor on pretty much every platform. Um, the best place after that is racingmentor.com. And from there, you'll be able to access the blog, which has tons of um, advice and uh, things like that. And also there's a link to the YouTube channel on there for people that don't want to read stuff. And you'll also be able to find the shop, which is just shop.racingmentor. Um, and on there is all kind of links to the courses, the books, the templates, and all of those other kind of helpful things that we've created to help racing drivers kind of get a handle on all this tricky sponsorship stuff. Fantastic. And especially at the minute, I, I imagine that's a, a lot of people probably have a lot of questions with regards to that. So please do get in contact with Jess uh, and I'm sure she will can point you in the right direction and the right courses to take part in. Fantastic. Now, Jess, if anybody, um, everybody who's been watching these drive time videos know that this final question is coming. It's probably the most important question you'll potentially be asked this year, maybe ever be asked, really. Uh, and it is, uh, Jess Shanahan, if you were a biscuit, what biscuit would you be and why? I've been thinking about this really hard. Um, <laughs> I'd have to be a pink wafer because I think that's on brand. They're vegan. Of yeah, it just it just fits perfectly, and I like them. They're tasty. I knew that was coming. I knew it was going to be a pink it? wafer. I Is just I just knew it was obvious. Yeah, yeah. I've gone for custard cream. That's my favorite biscuit ever. Custard cream, Gorbons <laughs> for me. I, I, I love a chocolate. I'm a chocolate hound. So you know. people are really offended when I say I don't like bourbons. I'm offended. I like I'm bourbon. Saying, I'm, I'm really offended. Ah, yes. Well, I, yeah. Well, I like both bourbon yeah. and a bourbon biscuit. It's a perfect night in. <laughs> <laughs> right, Jess Shanahan, thank you so much for your time today. It really is. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And look, we will see you trackside sooner rather than later. I know yeah. we will. And we'll have a coffee at Snetterton next time I'm up that way. Perfect. Lovely. Jess, Great. thank you so much for your time. Take care. Stay safe and I'll see you soon. Thanks, Ian.